Hey guys, I'm Puria, car designer and content creator, and today I'm going to be reviewing the design of the Lexus LC500 convertible. Let's go. To analyze the design of the Lexus LC500 convertible, we will divide our review into three categories. First, the exterior design, then interior design, and lastly, the driving experience. So let's start off with exterior design. Within exterior design, we divide it up to three different subcategories. First, the overall proportions, the first read. Uh, this is sort of the silhouette of the car, um, the overall volume of the car, the big graphics, how it looks basically when you look at it from afar. And then secondly, we have the second read. When you get a little bit closer up to the car, when you're able to really look at the volumes, the character lines, graphics, whether it's in the front, the back, the side, you're able to get a better look at the car. And then lastly, we have the third read, which is when you get really up close to the car and you're really able to look at the little details, uh, you know, again, you're looking at the stuff like the grill, the trim around the windows, the door handles, the headlights, the taillights, and all the details that go into those. For each subcategory, we will give the car a score between 1 and 10 for a total of 30 for exterior design. The Lexus LZ500, of course, is one of the most beautiful cars that we have on the road today, and my colleagues and I agree it's probably going to be a classic a few years down the road. The overall proportions, the silhouette, are uh, really beautiful, uh, very wide hips, very low to the ground, very stretched out, and uh, just a classically beautiful automotive proportion, so it gets a 9 out of 10. Moving on to the second read, again, the graphics, the volumes, the lines, and the uh, shape design of the car. Uh, again, in this category, a lot of attention to perfecting every aspect of the design. There are some areas of question marks uh, around the car, but overall, in comparison to everything else you have on the road, it's very well put together and it gets another 9 out of 10. And then you move closer and into the details, and this is another spot where companies like Lexus, especially with this car, uh, sort of serving as their halo car. It really has an amazing level of attention to detail. Uh, even the areas where you normally would not even look at have received some great design treatment. So it gets a 10 out of 10 in this area. So the total exterior design score is 28 out of 30. Next, we move on to the interior. Again, another area of great strength for this car, except for a couple of features where, uh, you know, items were carried over from other vehicles and uh, it just looks like maybe not such a great fit with the overall uh, theme of the design of the interior. And th those features include stuff like infotainment system, of course, uh, the, the one big elephant in the room. The interior design is also divided into three subcategories. You have the overall design theme of the interior, then you have the interior design details, and lastly, we have the ergonomics. Looking at the overall design theme uh, of the LC500, it is incredibly strong, and that is because it has a very close connection to that of the concepts that we saw before the LC500 actually became a production car. Um, so it's very well done, it's very well put together, uh, you know, every, there's a cohesive theme running around all around the interior, which is unfortunately not the case for every Lexus vehicle, but here in the LC500, they wanted to make sure that it represents the best of everything that, the, that Lexus has to offer. So they went all out and the design team did a great job of creating an interior space that feels premium and it feels like it has a cohesive theme throughout. So the overall interior design and the theme gets a 9 out of 10. Next we move on to interior details and this is an area where you can really separate luxury vehicle manufacturers from non-luxury manufacturers and especially a company like Lexus and especially 
a high-end car like the LC500. There are lots of amazing touches all around this interior and everything is a great representation of what Lexus as a brand represents and is capable of. So the interior design details gets a 10 out of 10. And then moving on to the ergonomics. Of course, this car falls in a weird category between a comfortable cruiser and a sports car. But to be honest with you, I think it does both pretty well. The seats are comfortable. The positioning of all the different elements of the interior to, to the driver and the passenger are pretty great. Uh, the one thing that's a knock on the LC500 is the fact that there is practically no uh, rear seats, even though they put rear seats there and they put seat belts there, it's really not useful unless you're a little child, in which case you're, you're going to be having to use a child seat anyway. So unfortunately, that has to factor in in the overall uh, ergonomics and the comfort levels of uh, the interior design, and that knocks it down a little bit. But as far as the front row, uh, it's really great. Uh, everything that you need to be interacting with is well within reach. Um, there are a variety of different posi seating positions that you can arrange for yourself, whether you're the driver or the passenger. So it's very comfortable. You can set it up for a, a more sporty setting or a more comfortable cruising setting. So it, it's really great in that area and it gets an 8 out of 10. So the overall interior design score comes up to 27 out of 30. And lastly, we move on to the driving experience. Arguably the most important aspect of a car's overall design, especially for sports cars, because it is the definition of every way in which you interact with your vehicle. It is made up of three more subcategories. First, there's a driving position, which will be scored out of 10 points. Then there is the user interaction, which will also be scored out of 10 points. And lastly, and the most importantly, there is the sound, the harmony. And this category is the only category that is scored out of 20. So let's get right into it, starting with uh, the driving position. This is your position relative to your interior elements as well as relative to the dimensions of the car and relative to the outside um, how does it feel how does how does your car interior surround you um, is it like a ferrari is it tight and compact does it hug you or is it wide open and spacious like a limo and there's merits to both which is why we have to talk about how cohesive your driving position is to the sort of experience and the image that you want you're trying to sell with the car the fiat 500 abarth is an example that always comes to my mind it's a real fun quick nimble car it sounds cool but you feel like you're sitting in a minivan so there's a little bit of a disconnect with this car um, as a lot of other people have mentioned about it sort of a combination a middle ground between um, a Porsche 911 that's more about the sporty side of things and about the driving experience <clears throat> and a car like the Mercedes S-Class Coupe or the SL that is uh, that leans more towards luxury and comfort than an engaging driving experience so as far as the driving position is concerned I love how uh, the theme of the interior sort of surrounds the driver next is the user engagement uh, how do you interact with the car and and how does it engage you physically and mentally again? We can't really compare a Miata to a Mercedes S-Class and by the same standards because they both engage you in a different way The Miata is more of about the visceral feel of the driving experience Whereas the S-Class is about removing you from everything that's outside and feeling making you feel as comfortable as you possibly can be Engagement is also about the interactive elements of the car, the door handles, the buttons, the UI, UX, the, the infotainment system and everything that basically you see and inter interact with. And believe it or not, the human body has a built-in sensor to be able to detect high quality manufacturing in comparison to cheap and low quality materials. And one a strong point about the Lexus LC500 convertible is how high the quality of everything feels. It's 
very well put together the attention to detail is fantastic in this car and appropriately so because Lex this is basically the Lexus halo car this is the car that expresses the brand imagery that Lexus wants to portray as best as they can um, so the quality and again attention to detail in everything that could be designed uh, exclusively for this car is absolutely sublime as other people have mentioned it as well and I'm very impressed by the level of craftsmanship that you see in this interior and throughout the car and then the highest weighted factor of all the symphony the sound <laughs> That right there. And that doesn't necessarily have to be the sound that comes out of the back of the exhaust. It could be anything from how the door clicks when you open it or shut it. It could be the beep, beeping sound that you hear when you open the door or uh, the sound that comes out of the navigation and infotainment system. But when you're talking about sports cars, um, the sound that comes out of the back of the tailpipes is probably the most important out of all of them. I would say probably 95% of that factor from the LC500 convertible has to go to the sound of the exhaust because it is such a powerful presence in the design of the entire car and especially with the top down, uh, with the convertible version of the LC500, you are able to experience it and enjoy it on a much different level and I have to tell you, this is one of the best sounding V8s I have ever experienced. Uh, you can compare it with a Mustang, Camaro, Corvette, whatever comes to your mind. And this is not necessarily a sports car in that category, but the sound of the exhaust has been engineered and designed just as meticulously as everything else in this car. It's brutal, yet just as elegant as everything that, that forms the entire experience of driving and owning the LC500. It, it, it almost doesn't really matter what all the other sounds are like. In fact, when you put the top on, you get a really nice, comfortable and quiet ride uh, on the freeway if you don't wanna hear what's going on around you, which is great for uh, the luxury usage of this car. But all that stuff almost don't matter because of just how good and how powerful the sound of the exhaust is. So. In that category, I would give this car a 19 out of 20.